What's up, folks? So look, today is a very special day because as you can see, I'm not by myself because I have brought on my favorite and the best horror aficionado, my buddy, Zero Gravity. What's up? Hello. <laughs> and as you know, this is a movie review and we must be talking about horror. And today we are going to be talking about this new film coming to you by IFC Midnight, The Relic. And I was super, super excited to review this film. There's so many hidden gems on this on the sheet of how many people who contribute and uh, people in their past roles and just everything that's come together to really bring this film. Um, it's really special. But the other really special thing about this that's really just been sticking out at me every time I keep saying my notes about my review is that this film is going to be releasing July 10th on video demand. But the other hidden gem about that is actually going to be in theaters July 10th. And with everything that's happening in the world right now. That's actually a really good step back into uh, the norm. And as much as I love the theaters, I couldn't ever think of a life of not being able to go to theaters. So it is amazing to see a release date for a film. And that, again, is July 10th in theaters and video on demand, depending on where you are in the world. But The Relic, an amazing film. You, you, you take it first. Break it down. What was this film about? All right. So we're following The Relic. Um, it basically tells the generational story, a grandmother, a daughter, and a granddaughter um, dealing with trauma that comes from what seems to be something like dementia or Alzheimer's. Um, and as we creep into the film longer, we find out that maybe this isn't just an elderly oncoming. Um, maybe there's something even further than a generational gap that's causing trauma within the family. That is absolutely right. And, and there's something so interesting about that because, you know, this film is only an hour and 30 minutes long. And I will be 100% honest in saying that the first hour of this movie with the conventions and things that you brought up about this film, um, you really kind of sympathize in a realistic manner with the family because there's realistic things that are happening. And, you know, sometimes horror films are so far fetched than what's happening, you know, you can quickly identify that, like, this no way this is happening. But with this film, it gets kind of tricky for me because, again, the first hour is like, yo, everyone could have a grandma who may be going through dementia, family issues, there's abandonment sort of issues between the uh, mother and daughter a little bit. There's, there's a lot that really goes on until that 30 minute minute, that, excuse me, that hour minute mark hit, and it just gets out of hand <laughs> it really yeah. really does i'm agreeing with that i think it's it's a little bit of a slow burn the exposition really makes you get to know the characters but once this film goes there's absolutely no stopping it um i think the 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 exposition that having you get to know the characters uh is really the scary part of this film because as we know, Alzheimer's, dementia, just dealing with old age is something that none of us can escape, which is scary. Um, you know, losing a loved one is scary. Um, and as opposed to many other possession type films, um, it's easy to differentiate between, you know, your grandma Edna and an actual demon. Whereas here, uh, on the outside, it seems like a slow burn, um, but it's really, Getting, giving you the stress, the the conflict in your head of is this grandma or is this really not grandma at all? And I think that's it's something beautiful, the balance between metaphor and horror. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And you speak to one scene that really called out to me, and it's the scene between um, the granddaughter and the grandma. Um, the grandma gave her a ring and it was cool. And then the next minute she's, you know, she's become a possessional was saying like, hey, I didn't give you that. You know, give me that back. And she went into a freight. And that's so surreal on so many levels that, you know. It's terrifying it might, on its own. A, a hundred percent. So, um, you know, I got I got to really say, like, before I even go any further, you know, Robin Nevin, who plays Edna, did an amazing, amazing job. Absolutely to stand out in this film. And that's not that's not to take away from uh, the granddaughter, Sam uh, Bella Heathcote. I think it's pronounced Heathcote. Even though I think it's, it may be Heathcote or Heathcote, I'm not sure, um, did a, a phenomenal job as well. But, you know, Robin, you know, I, I was surprised when I started watching this film and I, I instantly paused for a second because I recognized that face. 
She has been in the game a long time. She's 77 years old, doesn't look at one bit. Um, and she has been in so many of your favorite feature films, including the Matrix trilogy. And even Woo! to this age now, she is still killing it. I'm talking about an amazing performance throughout this entire film. And the reason why I want to put emphasis on the entire film is because most of the time, elderly roles are really like sub supporting characters. You know, they get their one little scare scene and then they're out of there or they're just looming in the back. Not much emotion, not much movement, whatever it is, almost like a set piece. She was in this the entire time and just the dynamics. And again, portraying a grandma that has dementia. So it's that off and on switch that she has a, a phenomenal job. I, I was I was blown away. It's easily my standout for this film. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely agree. The chemistry between the the three generations, grandma, the daughter and the granddaughter, um, just it's another it brings another level of uncertainty with you because it tackles a lot of uh, like, you know, real life problems, um, mm -hmm. the distancing between grandma and the daughter because of, you know, oncoming old age, maybe they don't see eye to eye with some things. And then what happens when you have a strained relationship with somebody that you love and care about, and then you throw possession into the mix. It's a whole, it brings it to a whole new level, a whole new level of just stress, um, it just intensity. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can feel it. You can, you can, I've said it probably 30 times already on this recording, but you can feel it on multiple levels. Yeah. Deep. Yeah. And then, and then when you compliment, the uh the sound effects and the score in this film instantly within the first i don't know two minutes of the film i was like okay this is chilling like this is the type of the sound effects and the mixing with the score gave me goosebumps right away because it was just that good you compare everything that you're talking about the realism the good acting and and a, and a good sound good sound effects and the score attached to it it really presented I, I want to say it presented a different dynamic for me in watching horror film. Usually I know how to coast myself or kind of prepare myself in a certain way and getting through them. But this one caught me off guard in, in, in so many different ways, because again, you want to take this serious because some of these things are realistic factors that's going on. But then again, the score is like, yeah, but I'm still back here and I'm still going to creep up on you, even though you may see it. The, just the mm -hmm. realism of the sound as well is, as has got to have been noted for sure. Yeah, I think the sound design is what splits real life from whatever is whatever entity is possessing this house from, you know, I don't want to say too much about it. But yeah. the sound design, even though what's happening in front of your eyes is a believable situation, a granddaughter comforting their elderly grandmother who is kind of losing it a little bit, you get these weird sounds that don't really makes sense and so what you're seeing is normal it's sad but it's normal and it's almost as if you have this overarching darkness above your head and <laughs> and if you if you're watching this with headphones like i did it's really it's again intense it's hard to ignore and it it's almost as if you have this you know creeping danger from behind you um and especially like i said when this film you know it's a slow burn but when it goes it goes and when that sound the, the wall of sound, I guess I could call it. When that kicks in, there there's really no stopping it until the end of the film. Mm -hmm. Look, put it this way, folks. Depending on when your house is built, obviously the older this is going to apply more to you. But all of us have heard little creeps, pipes moving and stuff like that. Consider that type of sound effects throughout this film and this out of nowhere. And it's just like, yeah, I hear that all the time. But <laughs> then you realize you're never like, gonna be the same. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, it's gonna be 4 a.m. tonight. And my <laughs> house is gonna go, and my house is old and it's made of wood, so it creaks just like this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna sit up and I'm I'm gonna you know what? This is all this is all your fault. But I digress. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a combination of realism and and fantasy. I sometimes I, I can't handle it. Yeah, it, it was it was definitely one of those like wow, okay, okay. And on, on that on that note too, like you know, um, the the director of this film, Natalie Erica James, this is her debut horror feature. She's an Australian filmmaker. I, you know, 
considering how this movie is so different from anything she's ever worked on and how this really feels really different from any horror film that I've watched in a very, very long time. Uh, I'm just wondering how much of her motivation or own personal experiences uh, come from within life to really do something like that. And, you know, I'd be very curious to, to really like tap into her mind to say like, what in the real life did, did you go through that you were able to really derive some type of motivation say I'm going to make a film about that. Cause this feels so real and so personal that you know, again, it's hard for you to differentiate between like, this is real and this is fantasy. And for somebody to have a mind like that, to you know, to make this, like you got to kind of wonder like what type of places you need to go to in some order to places. achieve that. And, yeah. and, and then, like I said, there's notable names attached to this project. I couldn't even believe this when I saw this, but Jake Gyllenhaal is a is accredited a producer role in this, and then executive producer role. You have the Russo brothers. Like <laughs> those are some names. Yeah, right those now, are some names. those are some names. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I got to say, before I, you know, my last um, couple of thoughts about this number one. Also, this film was uh, won awards at the Sundance Film Festival and the South by Southwest Film Festival. So very notable film festivals out there. Um, and lastly, the cinematography was so beautiful. And the reason why um, I really, really love the cinematography here, because I've seen horror films that are that are shot really nice, that only shot really nice in the dark. The contrast between the, the dark and the, and the day scenes are so beautiful. There's this one particular set in the woods towards the end of this film that is so visually nice that I... I could have took it as a screensaver if I could have without going well, to jail. It was so beautiful. <laughs> it was really well done. But again, because this film um, is a horror film and some of the really dark and claustrophobic scenes. So I said, matter of fact, if you're claustrophobic, this may not be the film for you because there's oh. some things that are really, really tight and so beautiful in such a small little, like small little box. They really highlight it. Um, all the little nitty details that really uh, was important to those scenes. So the cinematography was just, it was phenomenal to me. It was, I agree. I, I, I definitely agree. It was, it was beautiful. It was confusing. Something yeah. about the editing, how um, it goes from slow to fast. Um, the, the, the part that we all know, we're uh, talking about the claustrophobia. Um, <laughs> It was disorienting mm -hmm. and I can't stress how, in a good way, of course, I can't stress how terrible that feels mm -hmm. uh, when you're watching a film and you're not quite sure where you are. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so props to the editing in that one specific scene was beautiful. Um, the ending, I don't, I don't know how much I can say. I, I don't <laughs> want to be liable for Spoilers, the, but th there's something that go there's something there that yeah I don't even know how to even go about it. Then I put it this way: the ending was the ending that this movie needed. Mm -hmm. it, it was absolutely the way this movie should have ended. I really, after seeing, and I do not foresee any other ending that would have just made sense because again, with so many of the different things that kind of went on in this film, it got. And this is both for the fantasy side of things and for the, the the realism side of thing. They niched the two of those together with just simple gestures and just a simple set. And I I thought it was just really really well done. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, in you know the way that we've been talking about it, and there's these two sides that are that are uh, touched upon. I think the ending really could have been a solution to both, depending yeah. how you think about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I also think. Another thing that makes this conclusion great is that it automatically sparks a debate after the movie ends. <laughs> you know, there's, I, after I finished, there's, I'm just thinking about it. There's a million different ways that this ending, what this ending could mean. Um, just depending on how you perceive the rest of the film, whether you are looking at it from a realism standpoint or from a fantasy standpoint, both. It could be a conspiracy at the end. Who knows? Um, I really, I really love that. I think, I hope that's on purpose, leaving the interpretation up to the viewer afterwards. But there's just, I can see so many different directions as to where this could go based mm -hmm. on the ending. So it was mm -hmm. closure, but in a sense, it's not. 
Um, it's just, you know, a film is great when it leaves you thinking after you're done. Yeah, yeah. I, so, you know, that's pretty much what I have to say about the film. And, you know, I think I had to do my due diligence. My reserves about this film is that, um, you know, it was so different because, again, I felt like it was really um, it, it, it took a while for it to pick up and to really grasp the fact of it being categorized as a horror film. But much like you said, what, for, OK. This horror film is not like other horror films. Where no, it is not. Jumpy things and just like, you know, that that typical style to build. If you go into this open minded, considering that, again, this not only is going to provide, you know, really strict things that really points to it as being a horror film, but then the also the realism and the realistic thing that happened in the world that, you know, without proper education or just even through trauma, um, may cr create its own illusions and horrors in your mind. You take that plus that and put it together, you just got something that's really, really unique. So that is this, really scary. Yeah, really, exactly. really scary. Exactly. And this is this is why it's my reserve. But now that I'm you know able to review for you guys, this is the thing. Like, be patient with this film. Be patient and really invest into it. Like, sit down. Don't be distracted to get to it because there's a lot of little things that happen and. It all makes sense. There's really nothing I was scratching my head about. And again, I love the open ending ending because I love, like you said, the, the option of debate to saying like, wow, this could have been, this could have been. Hey, talking about the film afterwards means the film did its job. And I, I'm all on board for that. And obviously, if a film is able to make enough uh, cha-ching, there's an opportunity to say like, well, where do they go from this in a sequel where there's a lot of wiggle room under there to say like, hey, they could do some of the things with this, but we have to wait and see. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't I don't have no major issues with this film at all. I, 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 I enjoyed it. Um, it's just it's just not your old school regular horror film. This is a really, really different take for me because it just it, it really balances um, realism and fantasy and it combinates together. Um, and takes you on a very interesting, unique ride with a resolve that um, we'll have you talking and thinking for sure. So anyway, any other closing marks for you before we get out of here? Um, something I would like to see. I got to know more about that little shack. I have to know more about the origin of this demon entity whatever it is that's causing this problem it's definitely not necessary to the story as is yeah but maybe as you said if it gets enough to cha cha ching maybe not a sequel but a prequel Ooh. would answer a lot of questions um all you know the questions that i'm sitting here right now thinking of what about this what about that yeah. um but yeah that's all i got not to mention there was some backstory that was told in this film as well, too, that they can instantly build up on. So there's a little bit of source material they can work with on that notion. So, um, yeah, that's super interesting. But again, The Relic, it will be available in theaters and on video on demand July 10th. So I absolutely encourage people to check this film out. Definitely come back in the comments and let us know what you think. And stay tuned because I got a good feeling that we may be talking to some people from this film. And we're going to find out more about the questions we have as far as making this film and the plot and a lot more. So as always, people, thank you so much for watching this review and catch you next time.